Indiana, close to New Orleans. Way back up in the woods among the evergreens. Welcome back to HVC Talk Show. And today we're going to be doing a flammability test on R32. I think you'll be surprised. Very surprised. Guess what? We just installed our first R32 system. And after charging the unit, we had a little bit of R32 left in the hoses. What are we going to do about that? We're going to set it on fire. For the flammability test, we're going to be using this chamber. And what we have is a small amount, a de minimis amount of refrigerant left in the hoses after charging the R32 system we just installed. Let's test the R32 and see if it catches fire without burning the studio down. Yeah, don't freak out. We have fire extinguishers all over the place. So first we will try a spark igniter. Then we're gonna switch to an open flame. See what it does. But before we do this, let's test a highly, highly flammable refrigerant R290. That had been used by some folks to charge old R22 equipment. Now that's actually quite dangerous. R290 is equally flammable to R600, which is used in newer window units and refrigerators. It's actually propane. All the Read cameras the are recording now. Here's the chamber where we're gonna do the test. We have an igniter down there. I'm going to be pressing the button as Chris releasing the R32 right next to the igniter. I also have an Insta360 camera here just to film the PPM reading on the leak detector that measures concentration. So I have the hoses here that we have left over from when we did the install. There's a de minimis amount of refrigerant in here from when we disconnected the hose from the unit when we were charging it. Yes. All right, ready? Yep. All right, so I need to shut this valve, open this one. Got to be careful here. We only get one shot with this. Okay. There we go. Close enough. Okay, the concentration is going up. Oh, yeah. All right, ready for the spark? Ready for the spark? Yep, ready. The concentration is going up. One, two, three. Nothing. 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 All right. Wow. All right, closed it down. Yep. All right, so now we switch to the open flame test. There's a candle burning in there. Yeah, should be just enough left in here. Okay, let's see this. Here we go. You're releasing it. Okay, yeah. It burns. Any more? Yep, that's it. Wow. Wow. It flamed out. All right, so here we have the R290. And we're going to do the same demonstration. No, that's quite dangerous. So we have the fire extinguisher nearby. Watch carefully. All right, you going to hit the spark? Yes. Ooh. Wow. Wow, that was crazy, wasn't it? And yeah. that's why you that's never very put dangerous. R2. That's why you never put R290 in your AC system. That was scary. Hold on, look at the top. Blew the top right off. Blew of the top right off. Now that's flammable refrigerant there. That's a difference between flammable and mildly flammable. And mildly flammable. Mildly flammable was, was basically nothing. putting yeah. the flame out. Yeah. Turn the microphone into mush. Wow. Wow. That quick. Ooh. Yeah. Whew. If you think this video is boring, you can leave the video, but you need to listen to this first. If you're a homeowner or an HVAC technician, as you have seen it, it's very difficult to ignite R32. You need to have an open flame in order to catch it on fire. And even then, it barely burns as opposed to R290 that ignites immediately only using spark. Yep. And if you catch somebody using R290 to charge an old R22 system, chase them out of there because it can be very dangerous. That old equipment has no safety features on it. Correct. These new R32 and R454B systems will come with gas sensors and mitigation functions just in case. The gas sensor detects the presence of the refrigerant and turns the fan on to reduce the concentration of the refrigerant. They've been using R32 equipment in Europe and Asia a long time now, and they don't have any issues. In our last recording, we compared a phasing out 410A 
to a new R32 system. The new R32 system was more efficient and appeared to have better quality. I believe that the industry is making great progress. I think so. Yes. On that video, some people left comments regarding R32 compressors exploding, in some cases resulting in fatalities. That prompted us to film our next video to prove that it's not the flammable refrigerant that causes the compressor explosions, but a tiny mistake that HVAC techs and installers make. And that can happen to old non-flammable refrigerants like R22 and 410A. Yes, we will break down the principle of compressor explosions. And the same principle is used to double muzzle velocity on cheap pallet guns by only adding one drop of oil to the pallet. Yes, by only adding one drop of oil to a pellet, you can now kill a wild boar with the ordinary pellet gun. That's insane, isn't it? That is. The, the rednecks figured this out. They did. <laughs> Please watch that video. It's going to be fun. I guarantee you. In regards to the future, our hope is that Peltier coolers and heaters will be fully developed and that companies will finally develop HVAC units that no longer require refrigerants. Yes, Peltier units will be like air handlers without refrigerant lines and condensers on the outside. In the meantime, more and more companies are engaged in development and we already seen some of those units appeared on the market. And if that doesn't happen, our hope is that we switch to CO2. There's already quite a few car manufacturers using it as a refrigerant. Yes, that'd be real nice. Don't forget to smash the subscribe button and watch our next video about what causes compressor explosions. That's going to be a fun video. See you guys next time.